Good evening. This, the 71st meeting of the 71st term of the Baltimore City Council, is now called to order. Please turn off all cell phones or put them on vibrate. Uh, tonight's invocation will be led by Pastor Andre Mur Murphy, pastor of the Miracle Baptist Church. After the invocation, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And Father God, we come today on behalf, Lord, of the council, the city, the state, the nation. We come, Lord, asking that you would have mercy upon us, that you would be in the midst of all that is said and that is done here today. Father, we pray for the minds, Lord, that are collectively gathered to come together for solutions. Father God, we pray for the children of our city. We pray for each citizen of the city, Lord. Father God, we know that you can do all things. Today, we just ask that you give us the union, the desire, and the means to do what's necessary to resolve the issues of the struggles that lie before us. And then we'll be so careful to give your name the praise and the glory. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reverend, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, uh, Reverend, for the invocation. The clerk will call the roll of the members. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Curran, Henry, Specter, Middleton, Mosby, Holton, Welsh, Reisinger, Stokes, Branch, and Clark. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you. Tonight's showcase Baltimore presentation is Sue Father Gill of the Baltimore Student Attendance Campaign. She will talk about the great work being done to encourage school attendance in Baltimore City Schools. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you for having me. So uh, just briefly, I wanted to share with you as the City Council of Baltimore City that September is Attendance Awareness Month, and I wanted to bring it to your attention because there are critical things that we can do as a city, and in particular, City Council members can play a role in helping to support Attendance Awareness Month. And so um, what we know in Baltimore is that nearly one out of four of our children are chronically absent, missing a month or more of school each year. We also know that that level of absenteeism can uh, lead a young person to be off track to grade level reading, moving with their peers through their grades, and ultimately um, it determines whether or not they will graduate from school. And so I share with you just a little bit of information here, and I'm happy to talk more with anyone offline about this issue, but um, some of the ideas for Attendance Awareness Month include um, connecting with the schools in your districts to help with back to school nights, in particular resources and materials for uh, supporting good attendance, um, sponsoring a child uh, or parent summit to help connect families to much needed resources, launching um, some uh, neighborhood safety initiatives around uh, walking school buses or uh, a buddy to walk students to school, um, integrating attendance messaging into already planned community events, and then working with the uh, families in your neighborhoods to really understand the issues that are keeping them out um, from being able to get their kids to school every day. But um, I hope to help to uh, galvanize a citywide effort around this issue, and I would welcome the City Council's support in this work. Thank you. And I think uh, most of us look forward to working with you to do the things that you suggested because attendance is something that's very important for our students. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, it is this council customs to journalize the invocation. I ask for a motion to journalize the prayer. Motion by Councilman Henry, second by Council Vice President Ron Singer. All those in favor of journalizing the prayer say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. On the council member's desk is a letter regarding the appointment of Mr. Paul Plymouth as reading clerk of the city council. We will now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the journal of the proceedings from the August 11th city council meeting is on the council member's desk. Is there a motion to approve the journal? Motion by Council Vice President Ron Singer, second by Councilman Mosby. All those in favor of adopting the journal say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carried the journal is adopted. 
Bill signed by the mayor can be found on page two to three of the agenda. Executive nominations. EA 14-0252, Relique Hayes, Member, Youth Commission, 9th District. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 14-0253, Kelsey Johnson, Member, Youth Commission, 8th District. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 14-0254, Malik Brooks, Member, Youth Commission, 2nd District. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 14-0255, Felicia Harris, Member, Youth Commission, 14th District. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. Bills to be introduced. City Council <coughs> Bill 14-0427, Franchise, Private Pedestrian Bridgeway, Above and Across, the Supporting Structures, In and Below, the 4100 Block of Hill and Road Right-of-Way. Ordinance, for the purpose of granting a franchise to Morgan State University to construct, use, and maintain a private pedestrian bridgeway above and across the 4100 block of Hill and Road right-of-way and the Bridgeway Foundation and supporting columns and and below the Hill and Road right-of-way, subject to certain terms, conditions, and reservations, and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, City Council President, on behalf of the administration. Uh, please note that Councilman uh, Curran is a co-sponsor. This has been assigned to the Housing and Community Development Committee. City Council Bill 14-0428, rezoning a portion of the 2051 South Hanover Street Ordinance for the purpose of changing the zoning for a portion of the property known as 2051 South Hanover Street as outlined in red in the accompanying plat from the B32 Zoning District to the M3 Zoning District. Sponsor, City Council President, on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 14-0429, Sailor Property, former bed of Will Street, Ordinance for the purpose of authorizing the mayor and city council of Baltimore to sell either in public or private sale all its interests in a certain parcel of land known as the former bed of Will Street extending from Philpot Street southerly 477 feet more or less to the end therefore Ward 3 section 7 block 1815 and no longer needed for public use and providing for special effective date. Sponsor, City Council President, on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 14-0430, sale of property 3314 through 3318 Ardell Avenue, ordinance for the purpose of authorizing the mayor and City Council of Baltimore to sell either at public or private sale, all its interests and in certain property known as 3314 through 3318 Ardell Avenue, Block 2900, Lot 9, and no longer needed for public use and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, City Council President, on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 14-0431, zoning conditional use conversion of a one-family dwelling unit into a two-family dwelling unit in the R8 Zoning District, variances 2125 Orlean Street. Ordinance for the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the conversion of a one-family dwelling unit to a two-family dwelling unit in the R8 Zoning District on the property known as 2125 Orlean Street, as outlined in red on the accompanying plat, and granting variances from certain lot area sizes and off-street parking requirements. Sponsor Branch. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 14-0432, Food Service Facilities, Mirroring State Law, Ordinance for the purpose of redefining food service facility to mirror state laws providing, in accordance with state law, for a certain licensing exception, clarifying the basis of certain licensing, certain license application fees, defining and redefining certain terms, clarifying, correcting, and conforming related provisions, and generally relating to the regulation of food service facilities. Sponsor Curran, Kraft, Middleton, Scott, Holton, Henry, Welsh, Clark, and Reisinger. Any more co-sponsors? Uh, please note the branches of Councilman Branches co-sponsor. Chair recognize Councilman Kern. No comment. No comment. This has been assigned to the Health Committee. City Council Bill 14-0433, rezoning 4501 through 4515 the Alameda and 1110 through 1136 East Cold Spring Lane. Ordinance for the purpose of changing the zoning for certain properties located in the block 5267 as outlined in red on the accompanying plat 
from the R6 zoning district to the B22 zoning district, changing the zoning from portions of certain properties located in block 5267 as outlined in green in the accompanying plat from the R7 zoning district to the B22 zoning district and changing the zoning from portions of certain properties located in block 5267 as outlined in blue on the accompanying plat from B21 zoning district to B22 zoning district. Zoning district. Sponsor Henry. Uh, this has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 14-0434, Zoning Conditional Use, Amending Ordinance 06353, Ordinance for the Purpose of Amending Ordinance 06353, which authorized the establishment, maintenance, and operation of a convalescent nursing and resting home on the property known as 3617 through 197 Mile Lane, to increase the maximum number of residents allowed. Sponsor, Specter. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 14-0435, zoning conditional use conversion of a one-family dwelling unit to a three-family dwelling unit in the R8 Zoning District 2437 Madison Avenue. Ordinance for the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the conversion of a one-family dwelling unit to a three-family dwelling unit in the R8 Zoning District on a property known as 2437 Madison Avenue, as outlined in red in the accompanying plat. Sponsor, Th Mosby. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 14-0436, official city slogan, Baltimore, birthplace of the Star Spangled Banner. Ordinance for the purpose of establishing Baltimore, the birthplace of the Star Spangled Banner, as the official slogan of the city of Baltimore, providing for a special effective date. Sponsor Kraft, Middleton, Stokes, Holton, Branch, Henry, Walsh, Clark, Reisinger. Please note Councilman Kern is a co-sponsor, Councilman Scott is a co-sponsor, Council President Young as a co-sponsor. Chair, recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, it's a great amount of pleasure that I rise tonight to introduce um, this bill and the accompanying resolution 140184R. Um, the bill, it'll take us a little bit of time to pass because we have to go through our normal procedures, but the resolution will be able to pass tonight um, so that we will have passed it to go along with the Star Spangled Celebration. Um, Mr. President, the city of Baltimore has long recognized its significant role in the life of the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, almost 100 years ago, we passed legislation stating um, that the Star Spangled Banner, it's actually in our police ordinances, that the Star Spangled Banner shall not be played, sung, or rendered in the city of Baltimore in any public place or at any public entertainment or any theater or moving picture hall, restaurant, or cafe except as an entire and separate composition or number without embellishments of national or other melodies. And states, and whenever or wherever practical, musicians, performers, or other persons shall stand while playing, singing, or rendering the Star Spangled Banner. Goes on to say that if you do anything that disrespects the Star Spangled Banner or you allow someone to not sing it properly or not sing the entire Star Spangled Banner that you'll be fined $100. So we're not gonna tell that to Mr. Angelos or our high-flying birds these days because uh, every time it happens over there, they're violating the police ordinances of the city of Baltimore. Um, that's our long history with the Star Spangled Banner. But I'd like to talk about why it's so important that we adopt this as our slogan here in the city. The flag, the American flag, is a national and internationally recognized icon. You can go anywhere on this planet and people know what that flag means. Every minute of every day, Somewhere on this globe, someone is singing the Star Spangled Banner. And that Star Spangled Banner started here, right in the harbor, right down the street. Mr. Key wrote those four stanzas that turned into the song that every one of us has sung more times than we'll ever remember. Only 
20% of the people who live in the city of Baltimore realize that the Star Spangled Banner was written here. Less than that, of people who live in the state of Maryland realize that it was written here. And even fewer than that know that around the country. We've been asked by the Baltimore City Historical Society, the Friends of Fort McHenry, the Baltimore National Heritage Area, and the Anthem Project to move forward with creating this slogan being the city's official slogan. A nationally respected preservationist publicly commented recently that Baltimore has no historical face. And this is disappointing because we have more historic buildings in the city of Baltimore than any other city in the nation. As far back as when John Adams visited the city, the second president of the United States, he called this the monumental city because of our unique monuments. We had two monuments here at that time celebrating the history of this nation. S advertising campaigns may come and go. We may be this city <coughs> one year, we may be this city another year, we may have a mayor that picks this slogan and another mayor that picks, picks, this, uh, picks this slogan. But one thing we will always, always have, and no one will ever take it away from us, and that is we have Fort McHenry and Fort McHenry, where that flag will always fly, will always be the birthplace of the Star Spangled ba Banner, and Baltimore will always be the home of that birthplace. Thank you, Mr. President. This has been assigned to the Judiciary and Legislative Investigation Committee. Resolution to be introduced. City Council Resolution 14-0183-R, Informational Hearing, Department of Recreation and Parks, Implementation of the Recommendations Contained in the Audit Report by the Baltimore City Auditor. Resolution for the purpose of requesting the Director of, Department of, Park, uh, Director of Recreation and Parks to come before Baltimore City Council to discuss the implementation of the recommendations contained in the audit report by the Baltimore City Auditor dated April 9th, 2014. Sponsor Stokes, Kraft, Middleton, Scott, Mosby, Holton, Branch, Henry, Welsh, Clark, Reisinger. Please note that Councilman Kern, Council President Young is co-sponsor. Chair recognize Councilman Stokes. As that, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. The Council, um, the Finance, uh, Taxation, Finance, Economic Development uh, Committee will hear this uh, particular audit report. Uh, you know, it took us about three years uh, to get this particular audit. Um, and we now uh, want to see what it says and to see uh, what the Bureau of Rec and Parks and Finance uh, plans are to uh, make sure that the recommendations that are put forth in this particular audit are met. Well, thank you. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. Please list Council President Young as a co-sponsor. City Council Resolution 14-0184R, Baltimore, the birthplace of the Star Spangled Banner. Resolution for the purpose of supporting the use of the Baltimore birthplace of the Star Spangled Banner as the official slogan of Baltimore City in order to celebrate Baltimore's essential link to our national anthem. Sponsor Kraft, Middleton, Stokes, Branch, Henry, Welsh, Clark, Reisinger, Holton, Scott. Please note Councilman Kern, Council President Young as co-sponsors. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Mr. President, I move to suspend the appropriate rules for immediate adoption. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of suspended rules for immediate adoption of the re resolution say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried the rules are suspended. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you. Move the resolution favorable. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of adopting resolution 14-0184-R say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried this resolution is adopted. City Council Resolution 14-0185-R, in support of the definition of waters of the United States under the Clean Water Act proposed by the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers. Resolution for the purpose of supporting the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers proposed definition of waters of the United States under the Clean Water Act, helping to enhance the protection of our nation's public health and aquatic resources and increasing the Clean Water Act's program predictability and consistency by clarifying the scope of the waters of the United States protected under the Act. Sponsor Kraft, Middleton, Scott, 
Mosby, Stokes, Holton, Branch, Henry, Welsh, Clark, Reisinger. Please note that Councilman Kern, Council President Young, as co-sponsor, Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the Clean Water Act is a fundamental federal law protecting the waters of the United States from pollution, degradation, and destruction. Strong federal standards are needed to provide these protections because water does not respect any political boundaries. Critical streams and wetlands which supply drinking water, protect against floods, and filter pollutants were once protected under the Clean Water Act, but federal policy changes over the last decade have left these streams and wetlands vulnerable to degradation and destruction. These vulnerable waters of the United States now unprotected directly impact sources of drinking water for over 117 million Americans, including 3.9 million, uh, million residents here in Maryland. Both the EPA and the Corps of Engineers have proposed a clarification of the definition so that there is no misunderstanding that all tributary streams, regardless of size or frequency of flow, are covered under the Clean Water Act. Mr. President, I move to suspend the appropriate rules for immediate adoption. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of suspended rules for, for immediate adoption of this resolution say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried rules are suspended. Chair recognizes Councilman Kraft. Move the resolution favorably. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of adopting resolution 14-0185R say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried in this resolution is adopted. City Council Resolution 14-0186R, Baltimore Innovation Week, September 12th through 20th, 2014. Resolution for the purpose of recognizing September 12th through the 20th of 2014 as Baltimore Innovation Week, encouraging all Baltimoreans to participate in a series of scheduled events, conversations and actions around technology and innovation, and commending the broad technology community for creating jobs, increasing community, and remaining committed to making a better Baltimore through technology. Sponsor Mosby, Kraft, Middleton, Scott, Stokes, Holton, Branch, Henry, Walsh, Clark, Please note Council President Young and Council, uh, Councilman Kern and Councilwoman Spector as co-sponsors. Chair recognize Councilman Mosby. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. I stand today before you um, uh, to talk about the second annual Baltimore Innovation Week. Um, Baltimore, the Baltimore Innovation Week last year was a huge success, uh, bringing folks from all around the city who were interested in emerging technologies, interested in growing business in our city, and interested about the growth of technology throughout our city. Um, it provides um, a series of different scheduled events, conversations, and workshops, and platforms for these folks to come together and really talk about some limitations as well as next steps of moving Baltimore as a premier um, innovation hub for the future. Um, I'm happy to sponsor this, and I ask for immediate adoption and suspension of the rules, Mr. President. Um, second by Councilwoman Holton. All those in favor of suspending rules for immediate adoption of this resolution say aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion carried the rules are suspended. Chair recognized Councilman Mosby. Mr. President, I ask that we move forward with um, the bill. Favorably. Um, Favorably. Second by Councilwoman Holton. All those in favor of adopting resolution 14-0186R say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried this resolution is adopted. Chair recognized uh, Councilman Mosby to move for floor privilege. Yes, sir. Can we have floor privilege? Uh, second by Council Vice President Ross Singer. All those in favor of extended floor privilege to the guests of Councilman Mosby say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carries. Again, as we talk about um, continuing to push our city forward, the importance of technology, including technology, not only in the private sector, but also in the public sector. And that's what the Innovation Week provides us, an opportunity for us to share in this. Um, uh, technically, Baltimore is one of the sponsoring partners. This is something that's been very successful in Philadelphia, and I was happy to bring it to Baltimore last year, and this is the second annual. Ms. Deb Tillett, the Executive Director of ETC, Emerging Technology Center, here in Baltimore, a uh, nationally renowned uh, hub, um, is here uh, as the executive director to come and present, um, to come and receive this resolution on behalf of myself. And it basically reads, the City Council of Baltimore Resolution, I, Nick J. Mosby, Councilman of the 7th Councilmatic District, offer my sincerest 
Congratulations to Baltimore Innovation Week Advisory Board in recognition of celebrating technology and innovation occurring in the great city of Baltimore through Baltimore Innovation Week 2014, this eighth day, September 2014. Thank you. <laughs> City Council Resolution 14-0187R, celebrating the life and career of all-star baseball player Paul Blair. Resolution for the purpose of joining with baseball fans nationwide and celebrating the life of Paul Blair, recognizing his outstanding contributions to the Orioles as a center fielder, commemorating his many achievements, and supporting the efforts of the fans to recognize Paul Blair at the September 12th, 2014 Orioles game. Sponsor, President Young, Branch, Clark, Henry, Holton, Kraft, Middleton, Mosby, Reisinger, Scott, Stokes, Welsh. Please note Councilman Karen is the co-sponsor. Uh, this resolution celebrates the life and baseball career of Paul Blair. Paul Blair is generally considered one of the most outstanding outfielders in Orioles history and won seven consecutive gold gloves and helped the Orioles win the World Series in 1966 and in 1970. At this Friday's home game, fans are organizing a grassroots tribute to Paul Blair. I join fans of Paul Blair in encouraging everyone going to the Friday's game to bring signs recognizing Paul Blair. We're joined today by Rafael Alvarez. Would you please stand? And he's one of the organizers. Let's give him a hand. And we thought we were going to be joined by um, Paul Blair's family, but I don't think they arrived. So. Uh, um, Uh, thank you. Great. Oh, Chair recognized Council Vice President Ron Singer. Mr. You know, President, I move there? to suspend the appropriate rules so that the Council can immediately adopt this resolution. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of suspending the rules for immediate adoption of this resolution say aye. Those opposed, nay. The most encouraged the rules are suspended. Chair recognizes Council Vice President Rossinger. Mr. President, I move the resolution favorable. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of adopting resolution 14 0187 R, say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The most encouraged this resolution is adopted. City Council Resolution 14-0188R, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Beatles appearing at the Baltimore Civic Center. Resolution for the purpose of, of commending the efforts of the Civic Commission for securing the performers who went on to change the social and popular culture of the times, making Baltimore City a part of that historic event, and commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Beatles appearing at the Baltimore Civic Center. Sponsor President Young, Branch, Clark, Henry, Holton, Kraft, Middleton, Reisinger, Scott, Stokes, Welsh. Um, Councilman, please list Councilman Kern as a co-sponsor. This coming Saturday, September the 13th, is the 200th anniversary of the day Baltimore took arms against the British invaders. It is also the anniversary of another British invasion 50 years ago. The Beatles came to Baltimore and played two shows at the Baltimore Civic Center. These concerts are landmark moments in Baltimore history and at the request of community members, including Diane Jensen Glover, if she's here, uh, Frank G. Ledinsky and Mary Jensen Shea. I'm induce, introducing a resolution tonight uh, comm commemorating these concerts. Would y'all please stand? They're here? They're not here. <laughs> Chair recognized Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Um, yeah, right. Mr. President, Mr. President, I move to suspend the appropriate rules for immediate adoption. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of suspended rules for immediate adoption of this resolution say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried the rules are suspended. Chair recognizes Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Before I, um, before I do that, um, I do want to um, recognize uh, Diane and, and Mary. Um, <coughs> 
I really am honored to be able to, um, to second this and speak to this tonight. Uh, Diane and Mary, we all went to St. Bernard's together in, in Waverly, Councilwoman Clark. But, uh, but also, uh, just as importantly, uh, Diane was one of my sister's best friends. Um, they spent a, a lot of time together before my sister passed away a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, they were friends from, uh, from very young age. So um, I really appreciate this. Uh, it takes us back to CYO days. I don't know how many of you remember CYO. Bobby Kern's raising his hand right here. But uh, one of the great privileges I had in CYO at St. Bernard's was uh, I got to go buy the records. For those of you who remember what records were, they were these little vinyl things. They, they had um, 45 uh, RPM records. That was actually one song on one record. They, they were actually 78 when Ricky did it, and actually, <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but anyway, um, whenever the next Beatle album, Beatle record came, we would buy them so that we had them right off the, uh, the presses, so to speak. So it was really exciting uh, to be able to do this. And Mr. President, just as exciting as not only do we have uh, our St. Bernard's uh, women here to talk about this tonight. And here in this past weekend's Sun paper, the headlines here were forever fab about the Beatles 50, and these two young, uh, young women here on the cover are Highland Town girls. So we got them from the fighting first also that went to St. Elizabeth, which is about a half a block from my house. So. Uh, Mr. President, I, I say with great pride, uh, Beatles forever, and move this resolution favorably. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of adopting resolution 14 0188R, say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carry, and this resolution is adopted. Did I hear something? Okay. Uh, you can find the consent calendar in section A at the back of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion by Councilman Kern, second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried this calendar is approved. We'll now move the bills on second reader. Executive Appointments Committee. EA 14-0249, Mary H. Talley, Director, Department of Human Resources. Chair recognize Councilman Welch. The President. The committee held a hearing on Wednesday, August 27th, and three nominees appeared before the committee. I move this nomination favorable. Uh, second by Council Vice President Ross Singer. All those in favor of confirming this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. This nomination is confirmed. EA 14-0250, Henry J. Raymond, Director, Department of Finance. Chair recognize Councilman Welch. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilwoman um, Clark. All those in favor of confirming this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. This nomination is confirmed. EA 14-0251, Anthony W. Batts, Police Commissioner, Baltimore City Police Department. Chair, recognize Councilman Welch. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of confirming this nominee say aye. All those in favor of confirming this nominee say aye. Those opposed, nay. This nomination is confirmed. President. Thank you. Housing and Community Development Committee. City Council Bill 14-0319, Franchise Baltimore Red Line, for the, purpose of grant for, for the purpose of granting franchise rights to the Mass Transit Administration of the Department of Transportation of the State of Maryland for the location, construction, operation, and maintenance in good condition of the Red Line light rail system within the boundaries of the City of Baltimore, setting the terms, conditions, and requirements of the mayor and city council pertaining to the location, construction, operation, and maintenance in good condition, authorizing the MTA to make use of streets and other public areas within the city of Baltimore for the purposes <coughs> in accordance with the attached plat dated as prepared by the MTA of the Department of Transportation of the state of Maryland and filed with the Department of Transportation of the city of Baltimore on January 13th, 2014 and providing for a special effective date. Chair, recognize Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee heard this bill on May 1st of this year. There are technical amendments 
on all members' desks, and the clerk just passed out a floor amendment that I'm offering tonight. It is an additional amendment suggested by the law department after the committee hearing. Um, as you can see, it pretty much just clarifies the city's lack of liability for any of the improvements that the MTA should make along the course of the red line in the right of way that might belong to the city but will be under their control. Uh, I would move the amendments all favorable. Are uh, you moving oh, them sorry, all because you got I'm a floor sorry, amendment? I'm sorry. You're yes. moving the committee amendments, right? I'm moving the committee amendments first. Favorable. Okay. Second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Henry. Thank you. I move the uh, floor amendments. Second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of approving the bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. The bill moves the third reader. City Council Bill 14-0416, Franchise Correction to Ordinance 06-293, for the purpose of amending Ordinance 02-293 to correct an error in the description and stated size of the franchise area, providing for correction to the resultant franchise charge and providing for a special effective date. Chair, recognize Councilman Henry. Mr. President, the committee heard this bill on July 31st. There are technical amendments on your desks. I would like to move the committee amendments favorable. Second by Councilwoman Spector. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognized Councilman Henry. Mr. President, I move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilwoman Spector. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Thank you. Judiciary and Legislative Investigation Committee. City Council Bill 14-0409, Floodplain Management Code Corrective. Ordinance for the purpose of correcting, as mandated by FEMA, the definition of historic structure, clarifying an exclusion from the definition of substantial improvement, and correcting a misleading conjunction, providing for a special effective date, and generally relating to the protection, maintenance, and enhancement of the public health, safety, and welfare through the floodplain management. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we heard this bill on August 13th. Um, this is uh, another amendment to the floodplain management plan. Uh, these are mandated by FEMA uh, in order for us to be able to make our claims if we have any uh, for FEMA insurance. So we have to make these amendments. There is an amendment from the committee on the member's desk. I would move the amendment at this time. Second by Councilwoman Middleton. All those in favor of approving the amendment say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion to approve the amendments are adopted. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Move the bill favorably as amended. Second by Councilwoman Kern. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion to approve this bill moves to third reader. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. That's Oh, I'm sorry. That's it. Uh, yeah, we have to. I didn't see that one. Move this to uh, move to advance the bill. Third reader on the same day. Second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of moving Council Bill 14-0409 from second the third reader on the same night say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries, and Council Bill 14-0409 will be voted on when we get to the third reader portion of the agenda. City Council Bill 14-0173R, Informational Hearing, New Citywide Street Sweeping Program. Resolution for the purpose of calling on representatives from DPW, Solid Waste Bureau, and the Department of Transportation to appear before the council to discuss the new citywide street sweeping plan, the lessons that can be drawn from its early operations, and what steps can be taken to fully educate communities about the new plan. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we had the informational hearing on this resolution on August 26th, and um, actually it was a really good hearing, and I would uh, like to recognize, Mr. President, the Remington Neighborhood Alliance because they had created uh, a really great signs and they actually had this little uh, street sweeping card that they distributed 
uh, to all the people in their neighborhood telling them uh, when the street sweeping days were going to be that they could actually put on their refrigerator. So this was a great idea put together by the community association because as we all know, we don't have the streets, uh, the signs on the streets. So um, it was a good suggestion and I think those in attendance were uh, really appreciated seeing it. Uh, we would move the resolution favorably. Second by Councilwoman Clark. Okay, second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of adopting this resolution say aye. aye. All those in favor of adopting this resolution say aye. Aye. And those opposed nay. The motion is approved. This resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mr. Land Pitt. Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 14 0360, Zoning Conditional Use Banquet Hall and Dance Hall, 720 Mapleton Avenue. Ordinance for the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the establishment, maintenance, and operation of a banquet hall and dance hall on the property known as 720 Mapleton Avenue, as outlined in red on the accompanying plat. Chair recognized Councilman Reisinger. Mr. President, the amendments are on my colleague's desk. I move the amendments. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. Aye. And those opposed nay. The motion is approved. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognized Council Vice President Reisinger. Mr. Uh, Mr. President, I move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Public Safety Committee. City Council Resolution 12-0054R, Informational Hearing Prohibiting Racial Profiling, Resolution for the Purpose of Calling on Representatives from the Police Department of Baltimore City and Baltimore City Public Schools to appear before the Council to discuss the problems of racial profiling and to explore how to better address this problem through the expansion or creation of effective anti-profiling educational programs. Chair recognize Councilman Branch. On is this mic going? Hold on, hold on, hold on, Councilman. Is it on? All right, go ahead. It was quite an insightful hearing. Uh, I move this resolution favorable. Uh, second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of adopting this resolution say aye. Aye. And those opposed nay. The motion to approve this resolution is adopted. Thank, Thank you, you, Councilman. City Council Resolution 12-0076R, Informational Hearing, Mayor's Office of Emergency Management. Resolution for the purpose of inviting representatives from the Mayor's Office of Emergency Management to inform Baltimore City Council and the citizens of Baltimore about the activities of this agency and how these activities may help protect Baltimore from the impact of natural and man-made disasters. Chair recognize Councilman Branch. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Public Safety Committee heard this resolution on December 4th, 2013. It was an interesting hearing. Uh, I do move this resolution favorable. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of adopting this resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. This resolution is adopted. City Council Resolution 13-0110R, Informational Hearing, Preparedness and Safety in Our Schools and Communities. Resolution for the purpose of calling on representatives from the Baltimore City Public Schools, the Police Department, the Fire Department, and the Mayor's Office of Emergency Management to appear before the council to discuss emergency preparedness and safety in our schools and communities in the wake of the recent Newtown and Boston tragedies. Chair recognize Councilman Branch. Uh, Mr. President, the committee heard this resolution on December 4th, 2013. Uh, I do move this resolution in favor. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of approving this resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion to approve this resolution is adopted. City Council Resolution 13-0134R, Investigative Hearing, Police Department Staffing Concerns, Resolution for the purpose of calling on the Police Commissioner and Representatives from the Department of Finance to appear before the City Council to discuss the Police Department's short and long-term staffing plan, the number of officers available for duty versus the authorized strength of force, the Police Department's use of overtime to fulfill staffing gaps, and how staffing policies and projections impact the Police Department's ability to protect the public. Chair recognize Councilman Branch. Okay. Mr. President, the Public Safety Committee heard this resolution on November 25th, 2013. Uh, I move this resolution favorable. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of adopting resolu this resolution say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. This resolution is adopted. Third, reader to be held Thank one you. meeting. City Council Bill 14-0374, Plant Unit Development, 
Amendment Loyola College Athletic Complex for the purpose of approving certain amendments to the development plan of the Loyola College Athletic Complex Plant Unit Development. Third reader required, requiring invocation of Rule 12-1 for same-day advancement. City Council Bill 14-0409, Floodplain Management Code Corrective, for the purpose of correcting, as mandated by FEMA, the definition of historic structure, clarifying an exclusion from the definition of substantial improvement, and correcting a mislead of conjunction, providing for an especial effective date, and generally relating to the protection, maintenance, and enhancement of the public health, safety, and welfare through the floodplain management. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Curran, Henry, Spector, Middleton, Mosby, Reisinger, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. Third reader for final passage. City Council Bill 14-0320, Acquisition of Property, Baltimore Red Line Transit Project, for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of, the, of Baltimore to acquire, by purchase or condemnation, the fee simple or other interest in certain property or portions of property, together with all rights, title, interests, and the state of the owners or owners of the property have in all streets, alleys, ways, or lanes, public or private, contained within or budding that whole area described or contained within the perimeter of the area being situated in Baltimore City and needed for the Re Baltimore Red Line Transit Project and providing for a special effective date. Yes. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Kern, Henry, Spector, Middleton, Mosby, Holton, Welsh, Reisinger, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. Committee announcements. Chair recognize Council Ms. Stokes. Thank you, Mr. President. A um, taxation, finance, economic development has uh, a series of hearings for this coming Thursday, September 11, uh, beginning at 10 a.m. with bill number 14-0383, which is the Maryland Tra Department of Transportation County Transportation Revenue Bond Series 2014. That's uh, this Thursday morning, 10 a.m. here in Chambers. Um, 10.05, Council Bill 14-0375, which is uh, revenue obligations, water projects, maximum aggregate principal amount. That's 10.05 this Thursday morning here in Chambers. At 10.10 here in Chambers, Council Bill 14-0376, uh, revenue obligations, water projects, maximum aggregate principal amount um, also to be heard this Thursday morning. Uh, at 10.15 a.m. here in Chambers, uh, City Council Bill 14-0399, tax credits, historic properties, uh, for the purpose of amending City Council provisions that govern the tax credit for historic improvements, restorations, and rehabilitations. I put a couple of extra syllables there. Rehabilitations <laughs> to incorporate new requirements enacted by chapters uh, 193 and 194 um, acts of the General Assembly. And finally, uh, Mr. President, on Thursday morning at 1020, uh, Council Bill 14-0407, uh, Portable Homestead Tax Credit uh, will be heard here in Chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognize Councilwoman Clark. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, um, Education and Youth Committee will meet on Wednesday, October 29th, 2014 um, to, uh, at five o'clock for a televised hearing um, on bill number 14-0177R, and that is um, Complete Education in Baltimore City Public Schools. Uh, Mr. President, this is a resolution for which you are the lead sponsor in, that um, encourages the school system to um, make sure that the core curriculum includes arts, and physical education. So we hope that you will jog into the hearing, and um, we know that it will be well attended. There's been a lot of advanced interest. That is October 29th, Wednesday the 29th at 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognize Council, Councilman Welch. Thank you, Mr. President. 
The Executive Appointments Committee will meet Wednesday, September 24, 2014 at 10 a.m. in Council Chambers to hear Youth Commissioners EA 140252, Raleigh Hayes, as a member, 9th District, EA 140253, Kelsey Johnson as a member of the 8th District, EA 140254, Malik <coughs> Brooks, member 2nd District, and EA 140255, Felicia Harris, member of the 14th District. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chair Recognize Council Vice President Reisinger. Mr. President, members of the Council, the Committee, uh, the Land Use and Transportation Committee will hold a hearing with Bill 14-0379 on Wednesday, September 24th at 1 p.m. in the council chambers. This is a plan unit development and the designation is at Remington Row. Um, the committee, the Land Use and Transportation Committee will also hold uh, committee work sessions on city council bill 12-0152, which is transform Baltimore. These are the dates and times. Um, Wednesday, September 10th at 1.30 p.m. Uh, Thursday, September 18th at 10 a.m. Monday, September good. 29th at 10 a.m. Wednesday, October 15th at 5 p.m. Wednesday, October 29th at 10 a.m. Wednesday, November 5th at 5 p.m. Thursday, November 13th at 10 a.m. Tuesday, November 18th <coughs> at 5 p.m. Tuesday, December 2nd at 5 p.m and Tuesday, December 9th at 10 a.m. And these work sessions will be in the council chambers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Committee announcements on this side. Committee announcements. Okay, regular announcements. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Yeah, committee announcements. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, I have um, two individuals for whom I'd like to ask a moment of silence this evening. Um, Janet Arndt, who is the um, mother of Jennifer Arndt Robinson, who is the director of the Friends of Patterson Park. Um, Jennifer's mom, Janet, died um, about a week and a half ago, and um, <laughs> it's a great loss to her. Um, she had been um, ill for a while, and, um, and she passed away. Um, so I would like a moment of silence for her, Jennifer, uh, Janet Arndt. And, um, and many of you know uh, Gia Blatterman from Little Italy. Um, earlier in uh, August, her husband, <coughs> Albert, passed away and uh, would like to have a moment of silence for Albert Blatterman. Um, on a happier note, Mr. President, I would like to wish my son Paul a happy birthday. Today is his birthday. Um, I would note that um, I won't say how old he is, but, uh, but in, in keeping with the spirit of the evening, uh, his mother did name him after some shaggy-haired um, boy from Liverpool. So uh, we can celebrate that, too. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, before I recognize Councilman Mosby, um, are the two gentlemen back there with the Boy Scouts? Oh, you was? OK, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll let you do that then. Chair recognize Councilman Mosby. A moment of silence for Cardi Corner Cardi Cornish Sr. Cardi Cornish Sr. Chair recognize Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to welcome to the City Council Chambers this evening brothers Niall and William Walker. Niall is a student at Baltimore City College and William <coughs> a student at North Bend Elementary and they are here to earn their civic badges with the Boy Scouts and we spent some time together in my office this afternoon giving them a little civic lesson on City Council and what we do here on behalf of the citizens of Baltimore. Chair recognize Councilman Branch. Thank you Mr. President. Uh, last night I lost a very dear friend of mine uh, childhood friend of mine that I grew up with. Uh, when I moved in the neighborhood, uh, he introduced me to his uncle, who was at that time uh, Councilman Clarence DuBurns. And uh, I was uh, deeply, deeply touched. Uh, my heart goes out to his family. If we can place him also 
on the list also, sir. Thank you. Uh, Lafayette Tyler, I'm sorry. Lafayette, Mr. Lafayette Tyler. Thank you. Lafayette Tyler. All right, Chair recognizes Council Vice President Ryan Singer. Chair recognizes Council Vice President Ryan Singer. Mr. President, um, Did you want I ask for a moment of silence for Janet Arndt, Albert Blatterman, Carday, Cordes Sr., um, Lafayette um, Tower. And the next meeting of the City Council will be held on Monday, September 15th at 5 p.m. Thank you. There being no further business, this concludes the 71st meeting of the Baltimore City Council. Thank you and good night.